What about the possibilities of combining FES and brain gate and going wireless so that a body without being tethered is this, a, is this a distinct possibility? I mean, I think we have a video that shows us what it might look like um, exactly. if a person... So tell us, tell us, John, what are we seeing here? Does so this... This, this video gives the vision that we have, and that is reconnecting the brain to the body, not by connecting it by the biological wiring that we all have, but by connecting it with a physical nervous system. So the dot you see glowing in the head represents the sensor in the brain. It is transmitting wirelessly out to a device that then creates the command, and then the, the blue box is, is Hunter's stimulating system that goes to an FES system. And so what you can see is this individual is thinking, creating signals, it's controlling the FES system, and they're drinking a glass of water. If we didn't have all the animation on the inside, you would think that's just a silly animation of a person drinking water. Our goal, our goal however, is that someday a person who has had a spinal cord injury, who has had a stroke, is able to do all of these functions and you wouldn't recognize them from anyone else uh, because they have this implanted new physical nervous system. Does this exist yet? So this does not exist. The, 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 the melding of the brain gate system to the FES system, but we're working towards that. And so one of the big barriers is that all this cabling that tethers the person to the computers and, and there's literally a box of computers now so that can all be reduced to something that you can wear, much like Jen's uh, computer box that she's wearing, and can be reduced to a wireless implant. And I have so the first version that's now being tested, but it's not ready for humans. This is a device that is uh, a fully wireless uh, communicator. So it's a brain radio. It takes the signals that come out of that tiny electrode sensor, and it sits under the skin on top of the skull and that it would transmit those signals out to a receiver, like I showed in the animation, and that that could then go to an FES system to make the arm move or to make the legs move for walking. And so that device is coming soon. So, Hunter, what, uh, you want to get this, I presume? How is this, 10, 20 years away? Well, I guess I, I'd give a, a slightly different answer than John, John gave because I think it does exist. He showed you one piece. I'll show you another piece, okay? So this is a, uh, this, uh, I think there's a, a slide coming up, but there's, this is a, a fully implantable uh, device that is uh, totally implanted in the body. No, no external pieces anymore. So this device actually is the basis for controlling an artificial nervous system. This has all of the power, all of the computational capability, and is able to talk to a number of remote modules, these little devices that I have in my left hand here that can be distributed throughout the body. For example, this would be as they might dis be distributed for a system that Jen might use. Uh, in fact, at some point we will probably upgrade Jen if she chooses to, <laughs> from, her, from her Model T to a, a Model A. Excuse and, me, uh, did you just talk about Jen in terms that we normally use for computers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? You just talked about Jen with a, a term that we normally use for computers. You're going to upgrade her. <laughs> upgrade Jen? Right. Jen 3.0. Jen. <laughs> <laughs> We're already on 2.0. Actually, actually, it would be Jen 3.0. <laughs> She's wait, wait, right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute.